The Japanese equity market benchmark, the Nikkei 225, has recently been peaking out at new 33-year highs. Not quite an all-time high, last seen in 1989, of course, but close to. What's been happening and why? And the big question is, has the recent market push given it the impetus to go over to breaking new records in the very near future? Well, joining us now is Masaki Takatsumi. It's fund manager at Schroeder's Japan Trust, which is listed on the London main market under the ticker SJG Trust at market cap £267 million. Masaki has been the fund manager since 2019. Masaki, welcome. It's a pleasure. Thanks Thank indeed you. for your time. Uh, you're obviously a very busy man at the moment uh, with lots of interesting, exciting things happening in the markets that we've not seen in more than 30 years. First of all, why has it taken this long for the market to get back up to those levels? What's the big picture? Okay, so we believe that uh, two things have been putting the pressure on the Japanese equity market. First one, uh, in term, first one is the uh, ongoing deflation in the economy. And the second one is a very low return on equity for the average Japanese company. But more recently, we are seeing that the two positive change in the, those two factors. In terms of the deflation, now we are moving from the deflationary environment to the inflationary environment led by the positive wage growth. So that's a one significant change in the Japanese economy. Second one, return on equity thing. We have been seeing that the positive improvement in uh, corporate governance almost, almost 10 years, which has been structurally improving the level of the average return on equity for the Japanese company. That's uh, another driver to improve the Japanese equity uh, perspective for the last couple of years. So in summary, uh, Exit from the deflation to inflation and the structural improvement and return on equity for the Japanese corporation. Those two things now allow the Japanese equity market to back to the level which we 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 seen uh, 33 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as 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 someone that um, that speaks to a lot of people, um, I constantly get this reporting that the fact that Japanese equity markets love the weak Japanese yen. We got the Japanese yen weakening as we speak. I mean, it's it's up at one forty five against the dollar, or the dollar's up at one forty five against the yen at the moment. Um, but the yen's weaker against a whole basket of currencies. I know that Japanese equity markets like the weak Japanese yen. Explain first of all why that is the case. What is it about Japanese equities that benefits from the yen, that yen weakness? Okay, so there is a perception that the weak Japanese yen is the beneficial for the uh, overall Japanese corporate profit because uh, uh, we have a lot of the uh, well-known exporters like uh, Sony, for example, which clearly benefit from the weaker Japanese yen. So that kind of image uh, creates that uh, perception that the uh, weaker yen actually beneficial for the Japanese equity market. But uh, if we look at the history, there has not been strong correlation between yen weakness and the strong Japanese equity market. So for example, in the early part of the Abenomics rally, uh, we saw in uh, 2013 to 2014 or 2015, actually that Japanese equity market rally came with a stronger Japanese yen. So in that sense, uh, we can say that the Japanese, Japan, weaker Japanese yen is a must have thing, is not the must have thing to see the Japanese equity market rally. No, that, that, that actually makes complete sense. And of course, you quoted there Shinzo Abe, um, the late Shinzo Abe um, uh, and his intervention in the markets, which, which did as much as they could at the time to try and stir some sort of inflation. But you're rightly uh, commenting the fact that inflation is now beginning to come through. How confident are you that the Japanese economy is now on this new trajectory? Um, is there any chance it's slipping back or do you think that deflationary period is now well behind? 
I think that's a very good question. But uh, at this stage, uh, we are more positive that the Japan is getting into the sort of the positive inflation cycle. What I mean by positive inflation cycle is that the inflation driven by the wage growth. So wage growth means that the improvement in the co uh, consumer purchasing power. So that consumer has a, uh, is able to buy the uh, higher price product. So that means that the corporate can raise the price. So that corporate can improve the profit. And the corporate can improve the profit, they can raise the wages. So wage growth, uh, price increase, profit growth, wage growth. That's a positive cycle of inflation, which may start happening in the Japanese economy. So last year, inflation is more driven by the input cost, material cost increase. In that sense, consumer purchasing power it was actually damaged. So that, uh, but the, compared to the last year, now we may get in, uh, enter into the positive inflation cycle. So that uh, provide give us some uh, confidence that the, uh, Japan may be entering into the structurally positive inflationary environment. Of course, we've, 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 we've entered a new era on a number of uh, levels. Of course, uh, Haruhuku Kuroda, the former governor of the Bank of Japan, having left, and we've now got Kazuo Ueda here, who is now yep. um, leading this, this new Bank of Japan. Is, is he tempted, do you think, to start to tighten monetary policy? Or do you think the monetary policy tightening is still a long way off? Now, I, I know you're not an economist. I know you're a fund manager, and I want to get onto your fund in just a minute. But I think these are all important questions to ask to establish just what's happening in the underlying economy. Mm. Yeah, so as long as I hearing from the comment by Mr. Ueda or Bank of Japan, uh, Bank of Japan seems to see the more clear, uh, clear evidence that the inflation is uh, driven by the wage growth. So in that sense, until they got more confidence that the fast uh, inflation is there and it is driven by the wage growth, until these conditions are met, uh, we think that the BOJ uh, continue to maintain the accommodated monetary policy. And as we talked, just start seeing that the early signs of the positive inflation cycle led by the wage growth. So in that sense, it may be still too early for BOJ to uh, tighten the, start tightening the monetary policy, yeah, we think. Interesting. Let me, let me move on to Schroeder's uh, Japan Trust now. Um, as I said, it's listed on the London market. In fact, I can show you a chart here, actually. Uh, you, you know the direction of travel very well. And I, to, to a degree, this mimics what's been happening in the underlying market. Uh, whereas I was talking about those 20, uh, those 33-year highs, the Nikkei, uh, the Topics Index, of course, also at highs, recent highs. Uh, what does the Japan, Schroeder's Japan Trust comprise of? What, what are your biggest holdings? Yes, so... Basic, our, uh, our basic investment approach is uh, bottom-up uh, processes, so, which means that we are trying to generate the uh, alpha by picking up the best stock, uh, we, uh, best stock in the market. So in that sense, uh, we have a more positive view on the corporate governance improvement. In other words, we are investing in a company whose management is changing the strategy or changing the business to structurally improve the return on equity or profit to growth outlook. So for example, one of the, our top holding is the Toyota motor. So sometimes people think that the Toyota is a typical old traditional Japanese corporation. Uh, there, there is a significant growth holding uh, within the group company and the uh, old traditional KLS type of the structure. But the more recently, 
we are seeing that the increasing evidence that the Toyota is actually reducing the cross holding and the return the, uh, and the free up the capital to invest in the future or return to the shareholder. So even uh, Toyota, it is changing and that should lead to the devaluation of the share price. So that kind of the stock uh, we are uh, looking in it to invest in to generate the alpha or improve, uh, increase the return of the fund. Mm. Uh, it's interesting actually looking down the list of top 10, I think Toyota is the biggest, I think at 4.6%, but I also see that 4.6% is Sumitomo Mitsui, another company we talk a lot about here in the West. Uh, Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Hitachi, uh, Seven and I, Mitsui, um, Oryx, Tokyo Marine, these are all big names that we know uh, and love very well. Um, how, how does the how does the um, the investor in your fund benefit? Do we do we is it just are they just growth stocks or are we getting dividends or what what's the generator of of income on the trust? Okay, so in general speaking, uh, we have a two sources of the uh, alpha or capital return for the fund. First one is just we mentioned uh, mainly in a large cap. Uh, uh, we are betting on a change inside the company. So company like a Toyota, NTT, or Hitachi, you mentioned, uh, we think there is a, uh, some market misperception that uh, this is an old company with no changes, but it's actually changing. So that results in uh, the variation of the share price. And uh, also under the top 10 holding, we have uh, uh, many mid to small cap Holding uh, under which has a not so well known by the market, but actually have a global niche top franchise, which allows them to uh, maintain the very solid profit growth. So within such a sort of the market oversight type of the stock in the mid to small cap space, space uh, through our bottom up uh, approach, uh, we can realize a positive, uh, strong alpha generation by identifying that the, those company uh, with the global niche top franchise, but not yet fully aware of ma by the market. So it's a large cap in a market misperception and a mid to small cap in a market oversight. So that's the main source of the alpha generation or capital return for the fund and the investors. Yeah. Mm. Let me let me let me go back to the, the chart again, uh, if I can, and just ask you the question. Are you fully invested or do you have a, a lot of cash waiting on the sidelines to reinvest? I'm hearing from technical analysts. Now, I know this is away from your area of fundamental analysis and your your fund management um, uh, function. Um, but technical analysts are looking for a further pullback in the Nikkei mm -hmm. uh, before then launching on to new record highs. Now, that was one technical analyst who's looking at that. Um, do you do you keep cash on the side waiting for another opportunity to buy in, or are you fully invested? Short answer is that uh, we are always uh, fully investing. Investing. So basically, we don't bet in uh, short-term fluctuation in uh, uh, market timing, market. So we don't do the trading type of thing. So as we talk, that's uh, our our bet on the individual company has, tends to be the long-term investment horizon, so two to three years investment time horizon. So in that sense, uh, we are always uh, fully invested and uh, not control the cash to sort of the time the market, yeah. Mm. Uh, one, one, one final question, and I'm asking a lot more people this now. As a fund manager, what are you making of artificial intelligence and AI? How important will this be, do you think? for the next wave of growth in the global economy and the equity markets generally. I'm hearing that, um, I mean, it's almost like an in industrial revolution. It's almost like that sort of um, people are approaching it in a, a new way of doing things. And many are suggesting it is going to be the new leg for an important level of growth for the global economy. Do you buy into that? Are you, are you buying into AI as the next new big thing that you're watching? Yeah, that's a very good question. So it's tough to tell, but uh, my short answer is yes. Probably AI, uh, along with uh, uh, other new technology, which 
change the world in the past, like uh, internet, for example, uh, that AI gonna change the world. But uh, so that there will be winner and the loser under the new environment. But the key things to determine who gonna be the winner or loser is that the management mindset. So if management has a more open-minded and try to change the company for the future changes led by AI or any other new technology, those company can change for a better or change has a better chance to become the winner. So even for that sense, uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, management quality or, uh, or what the management is thinking about. So it's not the growth talk or tech talk. It's all about the management of the company. Do, do we think that the, that company management is uh, more open for the changes and uh, try to change the company to prepare for the draft dramatic change led by the AI? In that, if answer is yes, uh, we're going to invest in that company and vice versa. Really, really interesting. Look, um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there, but thank you so much indeed uh, for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Uh, that's thank you. Masaki uh, Takatsumi is the uh, fund manager of Schroeder's Japan Trust listed here in the London market under the ticker SJG. <laughs>